Some folks may have noticed this thing chilling under the table. What on earth would we need 700 CFM and 115 miles per hour for? And then we went, why does it have like a, well, <laughs> this is our, this is our 120 volt, 12 amp leaf blower. And uh, I went, well, let's, let's see what this can do for a PC. But then we had to try it out. There's a reason why I'm wearing a Band-Aid. We have an exploded fan and there's a mess all over the shop. The all new IQ Link ecosystem for Corsair finally removes all the cable clutter from your PC. IQ Link components synchronize RGB lighting and settings between connected devices with a single wire, creating a chain of devices on a single port via the Link Hub. Take control of your system and ditch the clutter by following the sponsored link in the description below. All right, so um, fair warning, this dangerous, it hurts, okay? Uh, so what I had done is I went, I would have the fan on the end of the TV and I, and I was holding it there like this and I turned on the blower and it went, and we were like, ha ha. And then all the blades rapidly disassembled at the same time and right into my hand, but that's okay. The damage was minor, but the potential for danger was high. So that being said, as we move forward, I'll be using iPro and all that stuff. But my initial thoughts were what I wanted to do with this was attach this thing on the end, use these couplers, down to a two and a half inch piping system through an automotive intercooler and into, well, said heat sink right here. In fact, I even had Nick 3D print uh, an adapter to go onto this to the two and a half inch pipe. The problem is twofold. The reason why I wanted to do that was this isn't the first time we've done the leaf blower thing. But what I learned from that is that compressed air warms up, compressed air. So when air gets compressed, it warms up. When air decompresses or rapidly decompresses, it gets cold. So I went, well, we'll pump it through an intercooler. That way we can cool it off. So there'd be a stupid experiment. Because one of the things I do when I'm bored is just like, what does 11 year old Jay want to play with today? Right? And I thought leaf blower to intercooler piping to intercooler, PC fans on the intercooler blowing air through the intercooler to CPU to show the most inefficient and stupid way to try and cool down a CPU. Never mind the fact that this pulls something like 1400 watts or whatever it is when it's at full power. Definitely be an inefficient way to keep it cool, right? Considering the CPU pulls a max of about 350 watts when overclocked. <clears throat> but then I noticed this is not, I'm unplugged. This is not, I thought I was tag out, log out. I thought that the, I, I realized this is not a turbine. It is a turbo fan, like a, like a, yeah, it's an axial blow through fan. So the idea here is this super fast motor, 12 amp motor here, right? 14 amp, no 14 amp motor, no 12 amp motor, just spins the crap out of those blades. The air gets pulled in through the back. It's a straight line airflow. It's even got the jet kind of a cone on there, which is designed for aerodynamic reasons as the air passes through. And then as the air is leaving, it's pulling other air with it to increase, like to speed up to the velocity. And it's just creating this straight through blow design that is not getting warm. <laughs> so now we're just gonna, but I have to be careful because the amount of power this thing has, like it's no joke. You guys saw that clip in the beginning. That stuff was legitimately blown off the table by this. Initially I was gonna take this and I was gonna gaff tape it to there. And that's how we were gonna get the air coming out of the intercooler piping. Look at that. Look how perfect that is right there, right? So we were gonna take the air out of the intercooler piping, plumb it onto there like so, gaff tape it down. But then what I found is when I put this coupler on there, which is a pretty aggressive step down from, what is this, four inch down to two and a half, we actually have a lot of back pressure and we have a significant loss in thrust, if you will. So I can demonstrate that right now. On the lowest setting, so we have this pentameter. <laughs> I forgot it was plugged in. That actually scared me. <laughs> so it clicks on, that's the lowest setting, and then we have all the way to cruise control, apparently. But on the lowest setting right now, creates enough thrust 
to where this thing, Nick, at the scale, the weight matters. To see it move, knowing its weight, you can then do some math to figure out like what the actual thrust force is. I'm not gonna do that math today. Eh, about 3,000 grams. <laughs> Now the reason why I have this switch is for terrible, terrible reasons. This is full power. It's gonna like torque turn. <laughs> oh, did I blow off the, oh I did. <laughs> oh no. Oh, wow. Actual casualty. It fell off and smooshed. <laughs> It's okay, it'll still work for our purposes. I'll buy a new one. But what I wanted to demonstrate now is with this on there. Oh, I have to I have to do this first. And yeah, with this velocity tube, if you will, it still has. And it weighs even more, obviously. It still has enough velocity to move itself pretty aggressively. But now what I want to show you is with the adapter on there. Which side is on on that? <laughs> there. My point is, it's at full speed right now. And you can even hear the restriction of air in here. So the torque was able to turn it over because of the electric torque on that motor, but it doesn't go forward anymore, right? Or it doesn't thrust anymore. So now, there it is. It's a Okay, so if you want another visualization that we are not embellishing, there's a reason why they put the handle there, okay? Because this is what, how you'd be like, oh, take that leaves, oh! Oh, he broke the ceiling. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. So we're gonna push you back up. All right, so obviously we need to know how this cooler performs with a bent corner. <laughs> and the stock fans before we can get any sort of like tangible result to say if it's worth it or not. All right, so I've got the Noctua thing. What is it called? I forgot what it is. Well, the NHU-12A. Push-pull, heat sink, one bent corner, it's fine. Tons of airflow coming through here. Fans are set to 100%. In terms of our CPU settings, I'm just on XMP2 and then let BIOS optimize for core settings. The voltage and stuff is not static. I'm just looking for any sort of AB comparison. I'm a little concerned. I'm gonna have to rotate this. I'm gonna have to like hold. Cause I don't know how I'm gonna, like how I would anchor it down, honestly. I guess I could flip it over and put it in the vise. I have problem solved. Okay, so here's what we're looking at right here. We care about our P core and E core temperatures that are chilling in the 20s, no different than our AIO until we go under load. The voltage right now while chilling is at 1.434. Um, let's just see what happens when I start the test. It will droop down. 1.307, 94, 93, 95. The cores are all in the upper 90s. It's not throttling the 332 watts. Oh, there's 100 C, there's 100 C. This whole overclock was sort of set for like, it's only a 38,586. Yeah, I definitely throttled a little bit because remember, this is on the water cooler, I was able to hit like the 40,600 or whatever it was. Yeah, so right around the 37,000 and change mark. But you know what? I'm gonna leave this same boot. That way nothing has changed with any of the voltage stuff. Here's what I'm gonna do. One fan. Ugh. This is the lowest setting. Like it's actually lifting. Coming through the other side. That's the highest setting. I'm gonna clear the min max now. Uh oh. Uh oh. I mean, that was a 39,504. Look, that was already faster than. Wow, it feels so quiet in here now. That was already faster, like, score wise. In a oh, shoot. I forgot it was under low. That's pretty practical. Like, if you're gaming in your room, your parents would be fine with this. The test is still running. We're at a 37,872. We're higher than where we started before. And you might be asking yourself, how loud is it? 
It's only 102, 111. So in terms of the noise limit, right? Like you're still yelling. Oh yeah. According to the California Department of Motor Vehicles, a California equipped automobile shall not ex exceed 95 decibels. It's only 102, 111. This is not California legal. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's very difficult for you guys to really kind of hear over camera how loud it is. Like my throat hurts from yelling. <sighs> okay, is this practical? No. Was this fun? Yeah. I, I, I'm still going to use this to, to dry my car off, which is honestly why I wanted it. It bit me. I've got a blood blister from one of the, where the piece, we had, we found a piece of the fan over here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Here's one of the blades that ejecto ejectoed off of there. It was an Asus fan, go figure. But you know what? This wouldn't be a J video if we didn't find a way to get my money's worth. Alright, so at the end of the day, what do we learn? Ideas that seem impractical usually prove to be. Um, but realistically it shows how you can't overcome... There's, there's only so far you can... You can't overcome a cooler's limitation in terms of the amount of heat capacity it's able to, to absorb. So for instance, clearly we exceeded through airflow a diminishing return, where by adding more airflow, that was not getting us any better temp at all because of the fact that the cooler itself, given the amount of heat that was going into the cooler and its ability to absorb that heat, put it through the vapor chambers, get it to the heat, fin or the, the, the heat sink and radiate out, is too slow even given a higher exchange of air. Because that's only half the equation. Air through the heat exchanger, but then the heat exchanger has to also absorb the heat to be exchanged. That's why water coolers tend to perform so well, or really big heat coolers or uh, heating uh, heat sinks with dual towers and stuff, because you're increasing the volume of the cooler. So these are usually pretty fun experiments to just show you guys, like, here's a concept of why things are what they are. And it usually ends up me hurting myself in some way. And I really want to explode that fan for you guys to see, but I can't, I, I can't do this safely. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah, it's not even plugged in. <laughs>